Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to lesson 5. And uh, we are looking at the anatomy of the amphibian, majorly the frog and the toad. And I want to notify you that in this lesson, we shall majorly be looking at uh, the digestive system, but also the visceral organs. So I would like to welcome you and encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel for information similar to this one. So, uh, when we scan through the body of the frog, to locate where we can see the digestive system and the visceral organs we are looking at, that is how our picture will look like. So you'll be able to identify, to see the location, the actual location, of some of the structures that we even know, some of the structures in the body of the frog or the toad, where are they located? So we can see there the esophagus, the stomach, the location of the gallbladder, the cloaca, the large intestines, the pancreas, the small intestines, the liver. Yes, so you can see from there where this organ, uh, these structures are located in case you are holding your organism. So let's stick to the digestive system for now. And uh, from our knowledge, at least we know that the digestive system is made up of the alimentary canal and the associated organs. So that is what the, the digestive system is made up of. And we know that the alimentary canal is the passage route of the food. And we are talking about the mouth, the buccal cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, duodenum, ileum, rectum. Largely where the food passes. That's what we call the alimentary canal. And then the associated structures. We are talking about organs of the body that associate with the alimentary canal to bring about digestion of the food. So they either secrete enzymes or other chemicals that facilitate the process of breakdown of the food. So those organs may include the pancreas, you know the pancreas secretes enzymes, the liver, the gallbladder. So those are the associated structures of the alimentary canal. So the alimentary canal together with its associated structures is what we call collectively as the digestive system. And we are going to begin looking at uh, these parts one by one, starting with the parts of the alimentary canal, the mouth. And we know very well that uh, the mouth is terminal, it is very wide, and extends towards the tympanic membrane. It almost runs from one tympanic membrane to the other is so wide it runs the entire surface of the anterior so we can easily if there was any humans we would say the mouth runs from ear to ear so it is very wide and of course this width this structure of the mouth has an adaptation has an advantage to the life of an organism so as you can see you realize that the wide mouth provides a wide gap for ingestion of large prey Yes, or large food particle. So you have seen that these organisms feed. They don't chew. They just swallow the entire organism, the entire food at once. For example, the frogs eat insects and worms. So they use their tongues for flipping out, flipping out and picking up the, 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 the prey. So as, they flick, as the tongue flicks out, it picks up the prey and it swallows all of it whole, doesn't chew. So it requires that the mouth should be wide to provide for that process of swallowing whole sized prey. And then the same mouth has numerous maxillary teeth, which are uniform. Uniform means they are same size. And then they are small, they are pointed, conical shaped and curving backwards. So usually these maxillary teeth are more prominent on the roof of the upper jaw. You can easily see them from the upper jaw. You can feel with your finger. You will feel some rough texture 
and those ones are the maxillary teeth. They are easily observed from the upper jaw, and they are they are pointed they are pointed backward to prevent the prey from escaping. Yeah, in case the prey wants to to escape from the mouth, then the the maxillary teeth can easily prevent it from escaping. And then the internal roof has nails. Single is nails, or you can just call them internal nostrils. And this one is through which the air enters into the buccal cavity. There are usually two. Uh, they are rounded and they have valves. So in, these internal nails are connected to the external nails, the external nostrils. And the, the air can pass through the external nostrils and enters into the buccal cavity through the internal nails. At the same time, they can be used to detect the sense of smell. And they are connected with the external nostrils. And it's the same, same way with, with humans as well. You realize that you can either you can breathe through the nose and the air enters to the mouth. The mucus can pass through the external nose nostril and enters into the mouth through the internal nares. You can smell food when it's it's inside your mouth. So it's because of that. So the anatomy is almost similar to that of man. Um, they also have the vomerine teeth which protrude out of the roof of the mouth above the eyeballs. So this usually vomerine teeth are larger in size and they are bony, bony and hard. And they are usually used for constricting the prey in the process of swallowing. So when you open through the mouth and scan it through, you can be able to see some of those structures there. However, some of them may be so small for you to see in, from the real specimen. But I'm going to look at, I'm going to take you through some of the some of them that you can easily see from your specimen in case you opened it. Uh, let's start from the bottom, uh, going clock, uh, clock, uh, clockwise. We can see the lower jaw, usually without the teeth, the, the maxillary teeth, or if it has, then very few. But usually, they don't. most of the species don't have uh, teeth on the lower jaw. And then you look at the floor of the buccal cavity, which is usually soft, and uh, with the mucus, it's, it, it, it is covered by the mucous membrane. Then the opening of the vocal sac, those, those are two usually, and those ones are, is where the sound is produced from. You heard the male frogs or toads making noise at night. Uh, that is where the sound uh, comes from. They are called the vocal sacs. Then you look at the gullet there, where the food passes as it goes through the esophagus to the stomach. Then the look of the roof, the roof of the buccal cavity there, you can see usually harder, that part there is hard. And then the vomerine teeth there that I told you earlier that are slightly bigger and bony and hard. And then the upper jaw, which is well equipped with the, vom the maxillary teeth uh, that we talked about earlier. And then uh, we have internal nails. You can see there are two also. On the sides of the vomerine teeth, you can see the internal nails, which are connected to the external nails. And then we have uh, the maxillary teeth there, we talked about. Then the inbulging of the eyeball. So the eyeballs, when the eyes are closed, you will easily see these eyeballs in the inbulging, the bulge inside. And that, of course, is very advantageous because it enables to push the prey, especially during swallowing. That is why... As the frog swallows, it closes its eyes to push the prey towards the, the gullet and the esophagus to the stomach. Yes. Then we have the station tube. And the station tube aperture is it can also be visible on the on the roof of the buccal cavity. <clears throat> and that one is uh, is used for balance. The station tube is uh, an organ of balance. But also it is connected to the to the tympanic membrane, which is an organ for detecting sound, as we shall see, as we saw earlier in the in the external anatomy of this organism. Then we see the tongue there, and the tongue is muscular and uh, is sticky and can easily flip out. It can easily flick out uh, because it is attached uh, into the the, the prelingual. Tubasis, that's where it is attached. 
the, the, the tip of the lower jaw. That's where the tongue is attached. And it is free from the other end. So it can easily come out uh, with a lot of force and accuracy to pick out the prey. Yes, if it is an, an insect, it can easily pick it out very fast. And an insect cannot escape from that tongue because it is sticky. Yes. So when you open the mouth of your specimen, you can do this at home. You can catch the, the frogs are common these days. You can catch one and open and just confirm whether you can see some of these structures we have talked about. And then that will be very good. Yeah. So in case you do that, you can also draw uh, that in what you have seen now in a two-dimensional way, in our biological way. So you can make a, a formal drawing uh, of, to represent some of the structures that you have seen. You should be able to practice this a number of times so that you perfect your drawings. You draw a much better drawing. Yeah, so you can see there are the structures that you can easily see. We have the maxillary teeth. You can easily see them. The internal nares, one is nares and many are nares. The vomeline teeth, you can also see them. The eyeballs, the inbulging of the eyeball. That one is supposed to be the inbulging of the eyeball. Then we have the station tube opening there. Then we have the opening of the esophagus. And then we have the opening of the vocal sac. In this, uh, this one majorly in males. In females, you will not see this. And then we have the tongue there. So I want you to get your specimen at home. Open the mouth. Look through. Your first assignment is to identify these structures. Familiarize with them. Like these uh, drawings I'm showing you enable you just to show you the, the names of these structures and the location so that you can confirm from the real specimen whether these structures are actually there and whether, when they are there, how do they appear and what are their relative sizes. And then you can start practicing how to draw them. Uh, you can also draw only the halfway, the, only the roof of the buccal cavity, which structures are there, only the floor of the buccal cavity, which structures are you able to see. You manipulate your drawings so that you are more familiar with them. That will be great. Uh, that is your assignment, number one. So you can uh, also proceed to cut through one half, one edge, along the side of the buccal cavity, where the, along the junction of the upper and the lower buccal cavities. You cut through there and open wide the mouth now. After opening it wide, you should be able to, we do this usually to identify which structures are found on the roof of the buccal cavity or on the upper side of the buccal cavity and which ones are found on the lower side of the buccal cavity. So you can do that and separate and open your mouth wide like that. So the, the specimen can be opened and then you can locate these structures. Are you able to locate again the maxillary teeth on the roof of the buccal cavity? Are you able to locate the internal nares, internal nares, the vomerine teeth? One is a tooth. That was an error. Vomerine tooth, one, and many are vomerine teeth. Then we have the eyeball, embulging of the eyeballs, the station tube opening. So will you be able to identify these structures? So try that out. Then on the floor of the buccal cavity, are you able to see the tongue? And then try to draw. You know, practice makes perfect. Continue to start practicing how to draw some of those structures that you see from the original specimen. And then you can send me uh, via inbox what you have managed to do. Then we shall start sharing and how we can improve them better and better. But I know you are in a position to even make better drawings. So... Having looked at the mouth, I want us to look at the visceral abdominal organs. Yeah, the visceral abdominal organs. Meaning, uh, the viscera usually is a word which is collectively used to mean the internal organs of the body in the abdominal and the thoracic cavities. When you open the abdomen and the thorax or the thoracic cavity of the specimen of the toad or frog, the structures you see in there are what we call the visceral organs. So there are those that are found in the abdomen, then there are those that are found in the thorax. So you can have, in this case, we want to look at them. We want to look at the, the viscera. So when you open the viscera, 
in general both the abdomen and the thorax as you open it there are some structures you are able to see so when you open and you don't touch any of those structures and displace them the way they appear in their natural state when they are undisturbed is what we call viscera in situ the undisturbed state of the visceral organs the visceral organs that are not disturbed that are not displaced they look like that and sometimes you can be told to identify those structures which i think is simple mm -hmm. you can let's look at some of the structures there clockwise from the right hand side you can see the left atrium that is now the heart then the ventricle you can see even the right atrium you can see then the troncus arteriosus you can also see we shall look at them later on in detail but at least you can you are able to identify the heart and its chambers and then you can also see the liver like for example the left liver lobe you can see it there it's the left because the organism is facing you so when it is facing you the left becomes the right and the right becomes the left i hope you appreciate that you can do this you can be at home and then you call your brother and si or sister and you face each other and tell them to show you their right hand you will find that their right hand is on your left and their left hand is on their and you are right so this is the same thing which is happening here so you can see the left lobe of the liver you can see the median lobe of the liver there you can see the fat bodies usually during breeding season the fat bodies are very many and you can always remove them you can even cut them out uh, in case they prevent you from seeing what you want uh, then you can see the stomach some bit of the large intestines you can see some bit of the urinary bladder the small intestines you can see there um, the ventral abdominal vein you can also see some but in most cases we do ligature it we cut it and then we ligature we tie and ligature uh, so but if you do not ligature it it looks like that and then the right liver lobe is also there so viscera in situ looks like that the undisturbed state of the visceral organs visceral organs that have not been touched that is how they look like you can be told to draw those visceral organs in situ the undisturbed state you may be able to to, to draw them yes yeah, so you can you can draw and uh, i represented mine like that and from the specimen i had i was able to see those structures there so you can also draw yours and reveal the structures that you are able to see but uh, in most cases we are able to see the heart the ventricle of the heart the auricles of the heart we are able to see the, the liver lobes we are able to see the gallbladder we are able to see the stomach some bit of it the duodenum some bit of it the rectum uh, the bladder we are able to see the ileum and then the right lung right and left lung some small bit of the lungs you can also see uh, the musculocutaneous veins uh, those are those are blood vessels that supply the skin and the muscles and uh, you may not you may ignore that it's not part of the visceral organs but these other ones that you're able to see i want you to open your specimen and then you'll be able to see those structures there the visceral organs and disturbed state what we call the viscera in situ and then uh, when you continue displacing these organs you will realize that some of them change shape some of them are stretchable some of them are highly folded so you can stretch out your so, like for example the easiest to stretch out is the alimentary canal so you can remove it and disintegrate some of the parts and pull it either to the left or to the right so you can see you but as you do that you'll be able to reveal some of the structures that you were not able to see initially for example now you can be able to see some more blood vessels as you can see there and we shall look at the circulatory system later on in detail you are able to see much more details about the structures the spleen now becomes visible uh, and a number of other structures there you can see 
much clearer as you continue displacing these organs or displaying them either to the left the right up or below you'll be able to see more structures however we shall be looking at them in detail but for now i want us to stick to the digestive system and uh, we have looked at the mouth you remember we have also seen the visceral organs how the visceral organs appear when they are undisturbed so let's continue with the other structures of the digestive system and we, now we have the esophagus and we know that this one is short it is usually narrow it is tubular uh, it has a longitudinal folds which close entry of the air into the stomach so as you are swallowing you cannot swallow and the organism cannot swallow air at, at the same time with the food so as it swallows the food or the prey that is blocked from entering otherwise you would be having a lot of air in the the organism would be having a lot of air in the stomach so but it's very muscular because of the nature of the activity it performs it has muscles that that are able to contract and relax to allow swallowing to take place and then the stomach this one is a bit longer and it has a thick wall internally and it's also folded uh, to allow distension to increase the surface area for secretion of gastric juice so the stomach of course because of the the enormous activity that takes place inside the stomach it ought to be more muscular and highly folded to allow secretion of uh, gastric juice which contains of course enzymes that are used for digestion but also to withstand stretching especially when it in ingests more prey so it is, should be able to withstand the stretching and then they have two constrictions at the entry and at the exit so that allow movement of the, they are called the sphincter the cardiac sphincter at the entry of to the stomach which prevents unnecessary entry which allows food to enter in bits and after food enters into the stomach it closes so it has a valve like structure and then we have the pancreas this one is a, a cream colored a bit yellowish and uh, it is in between the, the the stomach and the duodenum in the place that we call the mesentery that's where the pancreas is found and this is a peppery sort of fatty substance or structure uh, which is a bit conical in shape and uh, it uh, contains some yellowish or cream color so in, in at the junction between the duodenum and the stomach you can be able to locate it uh, very well and then we have the gallbladder now this one is an oval shaped sac lying between the main lobes of the liver so as you open the left and the right lobes of the liver you can be able to easily see it is usually greenish uh, or bluish in color dark greenish or, or bluish in color and this contains a lot of uh, what we call bile the bile salts so that is what it contains inside there then we have the ileum which is highly coiled highly folded and it's also small and narrow tubular with thin walls yeah then we have the rectum uh, which is usually short and uh, with thick walls and it is enlarged uh, it is very wide it is between the colon and the cloaca and is used for temporary storage of waste before it is eliminated so just like in humans the rectum is for temporal storage of wastes before ingestion or removal of those wastes from the body uh, so we can have a look at uh, the alimentary canal here in detail or oh, now we can let's call the digestive system sorry for that it is a digestive system when the alimentary canal is displaced to the right to the left yeah to the left so as you displace the alimentary canal to the left you'll be able to reveal more and more structures so you can see uh, clockwise we start from the heart you can see the liver the stomach there you can also see the blood vessels there that sub, that drain the alimentary canal what we call the hepatic portal vein and its branches there 
then we see the pancreas i hope you will see now the location of the pancreas it is between the stomach and the duodenum and the ileum you, you see where the ileum is uh, there's supposed to be a duodenum there right after the stomach so that's where the pancreas is found and then we have the ileum which is highly coiled and then the rectum and then the cloaca there the urinary bladder and uh, then we have the ureter that is transport urine or the passageway for urine from the kidneys to the bladder then we have the blood vessels that is supply or drain the organs there the kidneys we have the renals the renal veins that drain the kidney that connect to the posterior vena cava and then uh, we yeah we can easily see the veins when the when we displace it in that way it is the veins we can see then when you turn it the other side upside down that's when you can be able to see the the what the arteries but for now you can see the veins then we can see the testes just above the kidneys then we have the hepatic portal vein then we have the gallbladder we have the lung there so you can appreciate what you are able to see and then you can also make a drawing of yourself draw open the specimen and displace the alimentary canal to the left and then make a drawing of what you see you will be able to see more of the same remember your drawings must be very neat with a very sharp pencil yes so and you'll be able to identify these structures very well in one of the lessons we shall teach you the qualities of a good biological drawing otherwise for now i want to thank you so much for being good students and for being very attentive in case you like this lesson uh, i want you to subscribe to this youtube channel for similar content like this one please stay safe and stay at home